What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Black Mamba DJD-01, or their version of a oversized knockoff Transformers Legacy Tarn. So this was said to be by Alan L. Thanks for allowing me to take a look at your copy. Uh, he got this from Show Z, in case you're interested. Um, and it's really the second and version of a Masterpiece Tarn that we've gotten. So not a lot of Tarns out there. The other one is the MMC, which we'll bring in later for our comparison. We're going to do a full-blown comparison video separately from this, so you can stay tuned for that. But let's take a look at this thing. It is painted beautifully, pretty much 100% painted. You got the black, purple, lighter pink accents, silver, gray, Pink accents here, gold here and here. Pink on the gun. The gun has all the colors on it. Here's the back. It's uh, really quite clean and nice looking overall. The face mask is really well done. I assume they copied the mold, but it's just painted beautifully. You got silver, purple, silver on the ears. On the top, you got a little bit of pink, translucent there. I mean, it's a lot, got a lot going on for. It's such a simple figure. It does have some die cast in it. The feet are pretty much solid die cast. Again, nicely painted. And then the chest plate is die cast. The original Legacy figure obviously didn't have any die cast. So that gives this quite a bit of heft. And since people are going to ask me, let's take a quick wait. So this guy comes in at about 14 ounces a little over 14 or about 404 grams and just to give you a comparison here is the MMC version that comes at 294 grams or 10 ounces 10 and 3 8 ounces so quite a bit heavier uh, just due to the die cast and the materials All right, let's go over his articulation the head is on a ball joint so it goes up to there down to there side to side and it rotates all the way around everything is tight all the joints are really tight some of them are overly tight but shoulders rotate around on uh, I think it's just a ball joint up to the side on a hinge that goes up to there everything's nice and, and tight no loose joints rotation at the elbow you get a single jointed elbow gets you past 90 degrees up to there rotation at the wrist Single pin for the hands, just fingers move together. You have a rotation at the waist. Uh, no ab crunch. It's designed the same way as the Legacy figure, and that didn't have an ab crunch either. For the legs, the hips will kick up to there with the hip skirt, front hip skirt moving with it. Back to here, hindered by the sculpt, so it just stops right there. Out to the side. Uh, also hindered by the skull, but if you rotate the leg a little bit, you can get it up a little bit higher. If you get this sculpted piece out of the way. The rotation of the thigh is really tight, overly tight, I would say. It does rotate. You have a little knee cap piece here that will move back and forth on a hinge. Single jointed knee gets you past 90 degrees up to there. Nice die cast piece in here and then nicely painted. Uh, actually, sorry, that's not die cast, but it looks very nice. It's up to there. You have ankle tilt up to there. This is one thing I wish they had improved, increased the articulation, and they didn't. It only goes up to there. It really could have gone a little bit further if they just adjusted this. But And then you get forward and backward on that foot as well. As far as accessories, obviously we have the gun mounted here already. We'll remove that. And you can remove these guns from here. And these are painted and sculpted very nicely. These can fit in the hands. So you can have kind of two individual blasters like that. You can also take these and plug them into the side of the arms if you want one on each side for symmetry sake. You can also, and this is a gimmick barred from the legacy figure, plug them into each other. So if you plug that 
one end into the other. And you could do it the other way too if you want. And by the way, I forgot to mention these do light up. I did put batteries into this one. I didn't put batteries in this one, but they both have a little button right here on the top. So you can press that button. And nice little light up feature there. But if we combine them, you can have kind of a super gun. It is a tight fit, so just to, you know, push gently. All right, there you go. There's Tarn double wielding the gun. I think that's another option for a look. Me personally, it's not my favorite, but nice that you have this option. Now you also get a sword here, which is actually Bludgeon's sword. So in the Legacy line, they retooled this guy into Bludgeon. I actually did a review of Bludgeon. I never found the Legacy Tarn out in the store, so I never bought him, but um, he is the same mold as Bludgeon. But they gave Bludgeon a sword, so they've remolded the sword. I don't know if they're going to make a Bludgeon. It's possible, but this will fit into his hand. Nice tight fit. Really nice black paint. It just it looks really good. And that's a nice option for another weapon if you like. By the way, the mask doesn't remove. If you're wondering if that was an accessory, it's not. All right, for a quick size comparison, there it is next to the Mastermind Creations Optus Pexus, their version of Optimus Prime or Orion Pax. And here it is next to the Magic Square version of Optimus Prime. And I think he actually fits in quite nicely with the Mastermind Creations IDW figures, you know, the reformatted line, which I think is where he goes anyway, right? Because he's an IDW figure. A little small with the Masterpiece scale, the G1 figures, but for what it's supposed to be, I think it's perfect because you can put it right in with these guys and it'll, it'll just fit right in. All right, and here's a comparison I think most people want to see, the Mastermind Creations Culture, or their version of Tarn. And some differences here, first of all, it is actually shorter than this guy. And it is doesn't have the die cast like this one has. It is a heavy, thick plastic, but it is not die cast. And then it isn't fully painted. It's got paint on it quite a bit, but not fully painted like this guy. But we are going to do a full comparison, so I don't want to spend too much time here in this. But there you go for a quick comparison. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his tank mode. And if you've transformed the legacy version of Tarn, it is the same transformation, but there's a couple things to look out for, some minor differences, tolerances, stuff like that. Go ahead and remove the gun and just set that aside. We can actually rotate this around and just leave that like that. And we'll start on the backpack, come back to here, unpeg this backpack from here. There's just two tabs holding it in. And rotate here, around, it is a squeaky joint. These guns are a feel like thin breakable plastic, so I recommend holding at the top, pushing at the base so it gets the most support as possible. Don't pull over here. And then plug that in right there. You can just leave this like that for now. Come back to the front, we're gonna unpeg this chest from the front, it's tabbed in on the side of the arms. You can take the head, the head's gonna rotate 180 degrees and then go into this cavity. We can take the arms and these are gonna rotate or pull outwards on both sides, that, about that much. And then these are gonna rotate all the way around. And as you get them about halfway, you can bring this up and that's gonna tab in right here to the top here. And you can, you'll notice the head also went in as we did that. So finish rotating these. All right, next, you can go ahead and rotate the arms down. I will say everything is pretty darn tight on this thing. You can bring this down. There's a tab right here. It's going into the slot right there. So make sure this is lined up. Bring that down and give it a squeeze. And it does tab in there. For the back here, there's a little tab right here between the legs. Just tab the legs together. Bring your feet down. These are die casts, so just be careful with these. And you're to bend the legs. There's two slots right here. I'm going to go to do two tabs right here. It is die cast going into plastic, so you do want to be careful. So bend these up at the lower joint first, and I detach them. All right, and then bend them at the upper joint. 
And if it ends up in the wrong spot, that means you've bent it at the upper joint and not the lower joint. All right, let's bring this down. And both of these are going to plug into those two tabs. And I got to get this back in there. All right. Give that a good push. And that should secure the top part of the tank. So it should look like that. You can bring these kneecaps down, close them down on the back. And now we'll take care of these arms. So for the arms, we're going to take this panel here, this black panel, rotate it to the other side. And then you want this slot on the inside of the arm. So rotate the arm like this. It's going to tab in right here on the leg. This was actually done differently on the Legacy. The tab was on the arm and the slot was on the leg. So I don't know why they changed it. Maybe it's a bit easier transformation or better design. So that tab is going to go into here. And then after that, this tab is going to go up and into here. So get this one on. First, actually get this one in first, the top one, make sure that's lined up, and then get the side one in. And that secures very securely. You can rotate the hand so you have the flat side on the outside, just for looks. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Rotate this panel all the way around to the other side. Rotate the hands, so you have the tab slot on the inside. Bend the elbow so it's inwards, and then Slot the top tab in first. So it should look like that. Rotate the hand. And last step here, we'll take care of these. So go ahead and open this up. These are on friction pegs. They can come off if you pull hard enough on this. This is very tight in the beginning. So that might pop off on you. You can just pop it right back on. Go ahead and open up this tab right here. Push this down until it makes its way into here and it should go all the way. And then come to the bottom and plug this into the bottom. So it should look like that. All right, same on this side. Unpeg this, open up the panel, bring this in, and see this is what I was talking about. It's on a friction peg. So if that happens to you, push from here, push on the armature instead of on this. And that'll get that in. And just make sure everything's lined up and then bring this down, tab that in. All right, and there he is in vehicle mode. And I think this looks really good. All that deco comes out beautifully here in the tank mode. You can articulate these guns, but I, I recommend against it just because remember I mentioned these are very thin material. But this one does rotate. Rotate that around. The guns do go up and down, but they're hindered because they hit. But it's an easy fix. You can just move them forward. And in the official instructions, it doesn't have it like that. But that allows you to get it up higher. So I would recommend you pop these off, push them into the front. Maybe that's part of the transformation anyway. But now you can lift them up and it doesn't interfere. And of course, you can move these around. You can plug them in here. You can plug them in you know, on top of here. Whatever you want to do. And we do get the sword here. And this will mount in a couple places. You can put this up here. Although I think that looks silly. It looks a lot better right here on the side. Yeah, there you go. Or you could put it up here if you want. Me personally, I think this is the best looking. But you got some options there for display. I like that they included that and I like that it stores there. For a quick size comparison, there is next to Magic Square Optimus Prime. And like I mentioned before, it fits in better as far as scale with the Mastermind Creations reformatted line, which is what you want anyway since it's an IDW vehicle. But overall, a really nice looking tank fits in with a masterpiece-ish scale. So final recommendations on the Black Mamba DJD-01. I'm going to give this a 4 to 5. I'm going to recommend it. This is actually a nice upgrade to the legacy version of Tarn. There's quite a few things. The main things are the die cast and the feet. The obvious plethora of paint, pretty much covered in paint. A slight improvement, which actually I forgot to mention, is the ankles here. 
they were on a two hinges and now they're just on the one hinge on the legacy figure that hinge actually would sometimes get loose so he would flop forward or backwards this one nice and tight it doesn't flop forward and backward and that hinge has been changed i also forget to mention you can store the sword back here i'm wondering if they're going to do the bludgeon but you can do that and i think that looks really nice all the joints are nice and tight so he really poses very very well and he just looks really good for the price point of $45 this is just an absolute bargain for the amount of paint and die cast and overall quality for MP it's kind of a no-brainer to have this as your masterpiece version of Tarn but the only complaint I really have is there's some tolerances and the joints that are a little bit too tight uh, and you do have to be careful with these guns I mentioned that during transformation but other than that really no complaints here uh, on this guy so that's it for today stay tuned for the comparison with the mastermind creations cult tour thanks for watching we'll see you then